welcome back to Start With Substance and welcome to my first ever Q&A video. Um, I'm really excited to be doing this and I thought it was really long overdue. Um, basically the reason why I hadn't done a Q&A video for so long is because I didn't think I would get enough questions in. But I said to myself, you've got to try it, you've got to have a go, you've got to put the question out there. And I got loads of responses back from you guys and loads of great questions that I'm going to answer today. So if you want to get to know me and get all your questions answered, then please keep watching. So I've got the questions loaded up on my phone here and also on my laptop. Um, so I basically asked a few questions on my Instagram, um, which is at SWSblog, and my Twitter and my Snapchat and my YouTube. So I got loads of questions through across all of those channels, so I'm just going to kind of go through those now. Um, so please excuse me for being on my phone, but I've written down all the questions on there. So the first question um, was, did you feel nervous or scared when starting a YouTube channel or did you just dive right in there? Um, which is a really good question. Um, so I basically have always kind of had some sort of exposure to YouTube, I guess, since it's been going. So my sister was the first person to sort of get on YouTube as far as like me and my family and my siblings and people that I know. And um, and then my brother was also posting a bit of content on there as well, as I might have mentioned in a previous video. And after that, a little time elapsed and I went through the process of buying a house. And I thought, there were, I had a lot of initial questions, um, just kind of getting started. And I thought, there's no videos out there about this or there's nothing out there that breaks it down into some simple, easy steps. I'd been watching loads of YouTube videos and following lots of like different beauty gurus and they were doing makeup tutorials and uh, the odd advice video here and there, but there wasn't a lot of practical real life stuff that I could uh, find on YouTube from the people who I enjoyed watching videos from, so people who I could identify with. And I was like, well, why don't I just start a channel and do lots of how-to videos and kind of, I don't know, sort of get my personality out there and use it as a creative outlet. So I kind of just dived right in at that point. Um, I'd been watching a lot of YouTube videos within, I think this was around 2000 and... 14, I'd, like from the beginning of that year, I was like hooked on watching YouTube videos, but mostly makeup tutorials. And I think I got to a point where I was like, as much as I really enjoy watching these, I just want to make my own videos really. And there were no other like kind of huge sort of Ugandan YouTubers that I was watching at the time. So I was like, right, when I make a decision, I kind of go all out. So I'm very impulsive. So I just sort of dived right in and got, got to it really. Did I feel nervous? Yes, when I was filming my first video, I was quite nervous because I hadn't been in front of the camera for a very long time. Um, I used to do drama and stuff at school, so naturally, I guess you kind of get a bit more comfortable with talking to an audience, um, and I'd done a bit of public speaking as well. Um, but there was there's nothing like sitting down and talking to a camera. Um, and I think when I did my first few videos, my sister actually filmed them for me, so I think the fact that somebody was standing behind the camera and watching me also made me slightly more nervous, but I actually really enjoyed it. The next question is, if there's one attribute you could have that you don't currently have, what would it be? Um, that's an interesting one. Um, so I'm gonna do a physical attribute and I'm also going to do a, like, like a personality attribute. So personality wise, if there's one attribute I could have, it would be, to be more sociable. Like I'm not a complete hermit, <laughs> but I tend to shy away from like sort of social activities or gatherings or parties or nights out with people who I don't know that well, just because I do really enjoy my own company. I do really enjoy being in the house, chilling out, watching movies, um, and just spending time with either my fiance or like immediate family or really, really close friends. So perhaps if there was one attribute I could have, which I think would ben benefit me in life, it would be to be more sociable and to be more outgoing, slightly more outgoing. Um, just because I think I would meet lots of different people and I would have loads of different experiences. But I'm very comfortable with the person that I am and with the personality that I have, but that would be one thing that I would maybe add to that. A physical attribute wise, it would probably be... Now I've always had a thing about my nose, um, but ever since I discovered contouring, that's totally gone out the window, like love my nose now, because <laughs> I can manipulate it as much as I want. Um, physical attribute. Um, I would have longer hair, like longer natural hair. So my hair 
it's generally always been quite short uh, quite fine I don't mind the fact that it's quite fine but it's never grown that long so I would have longer hair I think that's a, that's a good one uh, the next question is meet and greet soon in Boston perhaps I have actually been to Boston before I have an aunt um, and probably lots of other family that live in Boston so would I do a meet and greet there if there were more than I don't know four people probably that I know or who subscribe to me that lived in Boston then yes I would love to do a meet and greet in Boston um, I'd love to do a meet and greet full stop anywhere so I'd probably likely pick the place where I have the most subscribers but for the time being I'm just trying to grow my following and really build my audience and just kind of get a big community of us style of substance people um going on here and then I'll start to think about sort of take branching out and doing things like that but if I meet you out and about or if I I whenever I'm traveling somewhere I always say um just in case I sort of bump into people. I'm always like happy to talk to people um, if I sort of meet you guys out there on my whereabouts. So meet and greet, yes, would love to do one probably when I have a bigger audience and more people to sort of come and see. Um, then I had a question about how I met my fiance. So I met him at a birthday party. So it was a surprise birthday party for a mutual friend. Um, his name is George, but he kind of goes by the name George the Poet he's a poet if you might have guessed <laughs> um so we met him at his surprise i met uh, my fiance at georgia's surprise birthday party and it's a funny story so basically we the surprise time had come so we were all in the room they told us to kind of gather into one corner they took the lights off and then sim who had been in the room along with everybody else kind of came over to the corner where we were because that's where everyone was congregating and um, I was I had a cough at the time because I wasn't feeling too well and I coughed and everyone was like shh um, and he kind of turned around and like smiled at me and he was the only one that did that and that was quite nice I thought and then when George came in obviously we, it's, lights came on surprise and then everyone sort of went back to wherever it was they were standing before so then George kind of came did the round said hello to everyone thanked everybody for coming and then Sim came back over after that and just sat down next to me it was like hi and then we just started talking um so yeah so then he came back after George had done his hellos sat down next to me um said hello just introduced himself and we just started talking and that was basically it we continued talking for the rest of the night and then he asked for my number at the end of the night and I remember I just changed my number so I couldn't remember it so I was like looking at my phone for it and I think at that point he thought that I was going to give him a fake number um but yeah I gave him my number we left the party then the next day he like texted me and we were like messaging for like day days on end like after that and then and then yeah so that's the story of how we met um it was it was really organic I wasn't looking to try and meet anybody I wasn't even in the mind frame that I want to get into a relationship at the time. So it's true what they say, when you're not looking for something is when you'll find it. So the next question is, would you move to UG permanently or even temporarily? I would move temporarily if there was a good work or business opportunity out there for me. So if I could do this full time over there, I definitely would. Um, but London or the UK is my home or it feels more like my home because I've grown up here so it would be a really big adjustment to just up sticks and move to Uganda. Um, so UG by the way is a sh sort of shortening for Uganda. So I don't think I would move permanently unless I was maybe retiring. I don't know, I don't know, I'm kind of in two minds about it. I've always sort of been of the mind frame that the UK is my home but Uganda is where my family lives. A lot of my family lives because a lot of my family live here too so possibly wouldn't permanently move there maybe we'll temporarily move there for a work or business opportunity and um, the next question is do you practice gratitude yes i do practice gratitude um i actually read a really good book called the secret and a big part of that book and a big part of a lot of books like personal development books talk about practicing gratitude um and it's a really key path to just being happy being happy with your current situation and being happy in preparation for future you know opportunities to open themselves up to you i try and practice gratitude first thing in the morning so i wake up and i think about all the things that i'm grateful for and that normally helps me get out of bed because let's be honest first thing in the morning 
I generally don't want to get out of bed, <laughs> especially because of the time that I wake up. Um, but yes, I do practice gratitude because somehow going back to what you already have and acknowledging the blessings that you've kind of been afforded is is the quickest way to feeling more happy and feeling more positive. Mm -hmm. Next question is how often do I declutter? So I kind of declutter as I go along and I am generally somebody who doesn't like to keep a lot of stuff around. So I often don't really have a lot to declutter, but I would say if I'm gonna do a big declutter, let's say of throwing away old clothes or getting rid of, I don't know, papers that have been building up, that's probably once every three months maybe. Um, but because I'm generally, I like to think I'm quite a tidy person and probably other people will say the same, I don't have a lot to declutter because I keep my surroundings and my environment very minimalistic and I don't have a lot of stuff around. The next question is three tips for getting over a breakup. <sighs> I've been there, we've all been there as ladies. Um, if you haven't been there, lucky you. Um, getting over a breakup is something that you can't really supercharge or fast forward. It's just a process that you have to go through. So my main tips would be to just let yourself go through the motions. Give yourself time to cry, give yourself time to be angry, like get all your emotions out. Go through the motions, the emotions, and allow yourself to feel them and fully feel them and that will get them out of your system. My second tip is to let time do the healing. And as much as it might seem that what you're going through is really big at the moment, and as much as it might seem like you'll never get over it, there will be a time that you get to where you look back and you can almost smile, laugh, um, just ponder over the fact that that was a point in time in your life that you had to go through to get you to where you are now. So there is light at the end of the tunnel, but it's time that will get you to the end of the tunnel. So just let time pass um, and let yourself heal. My third tip would be to completely cut all ties, to be honest with you. Generally when people break up, um, it's people that have been in a relationship and likely haven't had a friendship before. But even if you have had a friendship before, I think you need to make a fresh start. So if for you, that is getting all reminders of that person out of your life, do what you need to do. Um, get rid of old clothes or things that they've given you, pictures, like make a fresh start, delete their number, like just be done with it. Um, because going back or trying to be friends or trying to be civil, it's not gonna work. You're not gonna get the closure that you need. So I think that making a, a fresh break from that person and that situation is the best thing you can do. Um, so now I'm gonna answer some questions from my YouTube. Um, right, so I've got a question on here that says, when am I coming to the US? Ugh, uh, probably I'd like to come next year. So I'm saving for my wedding at the moment. So all my money is going into the traditional ceremony, introduction ceremony in Uganda this July. Then next year in June will be the wedding. Then I'll go on my honeymoon. So maybe later in the year, say like November time, I might plan a little trip to the US, but it would likely be to somewhere like New York, um, somebody sort of quick, somewhere sort of quick and easy, maybe just like a short shopping trip or something like that. I have been to the US before, but obviously this is way before I started my channel, um, but I would love to come to the US. Um, so I'm gonna say next year sometime, if not 2018. Um, uh, I had another question, <laughs> which is a really funny one actually. Um, why does my significant other not want to be filmed? So he is a very private person by nature and as his fiance, wife-to-be, whatever, I have to respect that about him. Not everybody wants to put themselves on camera um, and potentially broadcast themselves to the rest of the world. I have made that decision to do that because it's something that I enjoy and um, it's basically, it's my passion. YouTube was never his thing. Um, whether or not he will ever get on camera, I don't know, I honestly don't know. I would love to get him on here and do a video with him one day, um, but I'm not gonna push the issue with him. And I think that if you guys um, are in a similar situation, like if you have people who are really close to you who don't wanna get on the camera, it's not something that you need to push or force on them um, because that generally always shows through when you know, you've know you kind of got someone sat there who doesn't really wanna be there. So he's just a very private person and it's actually quite nice to keep our relationship off camera um, and off social media as well just because we don't open ourselves up to all of that judgment and all of the other stuff that kind of goes on when you sort of 
really put your lives out there so it will just be me for the time being will he won't he come on that remains to be seen i'm not entirely sure myself but um i don't know if you guys request for him enough maybe he will <laughs> next question is if you could change one thing about yourself what would it be uh, which is similar to another question but i would say I would change the fact that I care about what other people think so much um, and I think that when you're on YouTube and just in your day-to-day -day life there is a lot of judgment from other people and I think that that can sometimes stifle people's creativity and stifle your personality and um, from you being your true self so if I could change one thing about myself it would be to care less about what other people think of me. Care enough to kind of conduct myself in a very like normal way whatever normal is um but i would care less to be honest and i'm starting to care less which is i think a part of maturing a part of growing up and i'm sort of sort of growing into myself as a woman and really getting an understanding of who i am and with that comes not really caring about what other people think of you um next question is who is your favorite artist who is not american mm, that's a tough one <laughs> Uh, a lot of my favourite artists are American. Do you know what? I'm going to rep for Uganda on this one. I'm going to say Eddie Kenzo. I really like what he's bringing to the music game right now. And he's an up-and-coming... Well, he's up and he has come about. <laughs> he's an up-and-coming Ugandan artist. So I'm going to say Eddie Kenzo. Uh, so the next question, which is a really good one. If I could give advice to a married couple who decided not to have children, what would it be? Um, I would say that you should be aware of the fact that a lot of people are going to question your decision because that is just what people do unfortunately um but i would say stand firm and stand united in your decision if that's what you've decided to do or not do as the case may be then become very comfortable in that decision and be very united in that decision and if you guys ever change your views on that or if one of you changes your views you should always be communicating that to each other um it's kind of it's a funny one because i watched a video the other day that another youtuber did and you know she was kind of talking about how having kids is never really something she's thought about in any great detail whereas you get people who always know have always known that they wanted to have kids um same for me um right i'm at a stage in my life where i don't have any room for having children with everything that i do and I'm very comfortable with that. Um, my fiance is very comfortable with that and we're very happy, just the two of us right now. So I would say that if you're married and you've decided not to have kids, then enjoy your lives, clearly. Uh, you have more time, you likely have more disposable income. So just enjoy the two of you and enjoy that you can really spend some undiluted, undistracted time together, which is not a luxury that every couple, every married couple has. So yeah, I say, power to you in standing strong to your decision next question is what is my favorite color um i have a lot of favorite shades so gold and black <laughs> and white but if we're talking about color i'd say purple like hands down purple is my favorite color next question is what is your biggest pet peeve um there's probably quite a few but untidiness people who are untidy people who are messy like, oh, I cannot be in a messy environment. Like, I absolutely can't function. So I try to be as tidy as I can. I'm not always that tidy um, in my house because I've learned to relax a little bit. I used to be pretty, like, verging on OCD. But um, I would say that that's always been my biggest pet peeve. And if I go somewhere and it's not tidy, I either won't stay or I will stay and I will tidy. <laughs> uh, the next question is, how much income should a married couple save a month to prepare them for retirement um, so that's a good question I would say there shouldn't be a set amount I think you should set aside a percentage of your income um, if you plan on kind of pulling that money together then both of us sit down and agree on a comfortable percentage um, whether that's 10% or 20% it all comes down to what you can afford to put away um, but I would say that if you are a working married couple then look into your company's pension schemes invest in that or look externally at other pension schemes um, and that way you can just take the money out of your paycheck before you've even thought about it but the company ones are pretty good because they also contribute as well so I would definitely say that you should both look to 
individually like look at your company's pension schemes and invest in those because you get the added benefit of your company putting money into that and and then as a couple i would say that you should put some money aside just for savings which is probably what your question was um put some money aside for general general savings um for the both of you um even if it's something as small as 10 percent of your combined income I think that's a, a good amount to start with and then whether that's for your retirement or for investments that you want to make together as a couple then at least you've got that pot of money sitting there um, and likely in a, a savings account where you're sort of building on interest on it. Uh, the next question is do I participate in any community or charitable activity? A uh, short answer to, to that question is no I currently do not but I used to so while I was um, studying, I used to do a lot of volunteering. Um, I did a lot of volunteering with an organisation which was then called the Rafiki Network, which used to, uh, which is an organisation that went into inner city schools and did a mentoring program and ran presentations and workshops to help uh, kids at the sort of um, school age just become learn more skills and become more employable and learn about how to prepare themselves for the world of work so i did quite a bit there uh i also had an active role in a community thing that we have within the ugandan community called party in the park um so it's a very small group of people but we essentially get together once a year in the summer organize a day out in the park everybody cooks food brings games and we play and we chat and it's just a get together for everybody it's kind of like the summer event um so i was part of the organization committee for that and helps kind of organize the games and stuff um so yeah that's kind of the community thing i don't do too much now because honestly i really don't have the time but there are volunteer schemes at my workplace which i really want to get involved in um we are kind of doing a similar thing like going into schools and mentoring young children helping them with literacy skills and things like that so the next question is how do you know when you've outgrown a childhood friend uh of almost 20 years uh this is a good question because i think this is something that a lot of people face um as we grow as we mature we all kind of tend to go in different directions or life takes us in different directions i think it's generally um the general feel that you get from being around them if it's a positive and feeling and you come away feeling really enriched then it's a good relationship still if you come away feeling drained and feeling really negative then i'd say that that's a relationship that you've outgrown and i'm always a strong advocate of keeping people who are a positive influence in your life and that doesn't mean kicking out everybody who comes to you with their problems that just means essentially understanding people who are taking from you but also giving back to you as opposed to the people who are just taking from you and not giving anything back to you. So, um, so I'm going to pause here because uh, we have loads of questions so I'm going to break this into part one so if you want to see part two tune in next week.